Welcome to today's Bible study for New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. Pastor Randall Baker. Uh, we'd just like to remind you that you can send in a gift, an offering, whatever you want to send it in for. The church, the running of the church, the building fund, the different projects, the uh, ladies club missions, the uh, Sunday school, whatever you like to send it in to. Send it in to P.O. Box 151 Alexandria, Kentucky 41001. And as always, may uh, God richly bless you for whatever you do give or whatever you have given. I would ask you to pray for some people. My uh, uh, Sister Sylvia's ex-husband Jim Reese, he has uh, been diagnosed with uh, cancer, pancreatic cancer, and uh, we'll be starting treatments here really soon, and probably even an operation maybe in the in the future a bit. But pray for him, keep him in your prayers. Sylvia's grandson Dylan has also been diagnosed with cancer, but he is uh, uh, has pretty good prognosis where they uh, think they'll be able to uh, pretty much uh, cure him with uh, chemotherapy. Uh, pray for Herschel Vryers, who is also going through some chemo. Pray for Lucy Mays and her family. Pray for Nancy Combs, Travis James. Uh, Preacher Roger Bear, as I've mentioned before, has, uh, I believe, kidney cancer. Pray for him. Brother C.A. Griffith is suffering with cancer as well. Bless, ask God that he would bless him. Uh, Sister Geneva Harrell, my brother William, my sister Sylvia. All the widows, all the widowers, if I forgot to mention anyone, I apologize. But uh, just ask God that he would bless all of them, all the elderly, all the sick and the need, whatever the need might be. Lord, we all stand in need of something. Just, just ask God that he would bless uh, those that are in need, and whether it be a physical physical, whether it be uh, spiritual, financial, or whatever it is, Lord, just, just bless them, Heavenly Father, and, and we ask the church also to pray for them, I'll, as well as we'd ask uh, that you would, you would pray for our church and the congregation of it, not only that, but all of uh, the ministries of the church and all the congregations everywhere, all of God's people, wherever they might be, and of course, as we always say, uh, the uh, lost. Pray for today's Bible study also, which will be on Joshua chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. But let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful, mighty things that you do. You're a great God. You're merciful, compassionate, Lord. We thank you for it. You're full of grace, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for all that you do for us. Bless those that I've asked uh, prayer for, Lord. Be with them and heal them, comfort them, whatever whatever the need might be, Lord. Bless and be with them. Guide and direct them, all the God's people all over the world, wherever they might be. And bless the lost to show that they are lost and undone before it is everlasting too late, Lord. And we'll thank you for it. Bless those that are, uh, uh, are, are having a hard time, Heavenly Father, the widows and the widowers and the orphans, wherever they might be. Lord, bless them and, and raise them up and keep them safe. And uh, just bless them in all ways, Lord. And we'll thank you for it. Bless our Bible study today on the... Joshua chapter 11. Bless our reading of the word. Bless our understanding of the word, Lord, and we'll thank you for it. We'll give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. And amen. Let's try now. We'll begin on uh, in verse 1, and we'll read verses 1 through 5 of uh, Joshua chapter 11, verse 1. says, And it came to pass when Jabin, king of Hazor, uh, had heard these things that he sent to Jobab, king of Madden, and to the king of Shimron, and to the king of uh, Ashsheph, and to the kings that were on the north of the mountains, and uh, of the plains south of Chinnathereth, or Chinnareth, and in the valley, and in the borders of Doron on the west, and to the Can Canaanite on the east and on the west, and to the Amorite, and to the Hittite, and to the Perizzite, and to the Jebusite in the mountains, and to the Hivite under Hermon in the valley of Mizpah. And they went out, they and all their hosts with them, much people, even as the sand that is upon the seashore in multitude, with horses and chariots, very many. And when all these kings were met together, they came and pitched together at the waters of Miron to fight against Israel. So Jabin, who was the king of Hazar, a place up north in there, had heard of these things. And, and I'm sure that we know the things that they're talking about, how God had defeated different people. Because in some of the previous chapters, and as far back even as chapter 5, uh, they talk about these kings and these people of Canaan that had heard about Israel. They had heard about what God had uh, was fighting for them, and they had God had had went into Israel and he had done all these things to Israel and, and brought uh, them out of Israel and killed all the uh, firstborn of the Egyptians and all of the plagues that he put on them. And they all feared and they were very afraid. 
Now this fear did cause some different reactions to people in Jericho. As you remember, Jericho uh, then went inside its gates, locked itself up, and, and just shut up everything, trying to keep Israel out. They thought they would trust in those big, thick walls that they had. Uh, and then we know, of course, that God uh, had that fall down flat, just as any defense will be against God. And uh, uh, AI, then, we know that next was on the list. They fought there on their own. They did fight. They came out and fought uh, Israel, and they had a temporary victory, but it wasn't because of them. It was because of Israel's sin. Uh, but after that sin was uh, discovered and taken care of, uh, they were also defeated and destroyed. And then we read about Gideon, uh, or Gibeon rather, where Gibeon, uh, through trickery, made a deal to, the, to be the servants of Israel. Now we read about these five kings of the south, and, and, uh, and they all banded together. This is, this is, as you remember, down south was where we, would we become uh, the area of Judah later. Uh, they all come together, but, but, uh, but they were defeated. We read that were defeated. They were destroyed and spoiled. Uh, now Jabin, uh, now Jabin uh, Hazar, this is to the north now we're talking about, he contacted other kings in the, in the north and put together a great coalition of, of armies, of nations, of kingdoms. And he gathered together kings from kingdoms all over the northern part uh, of Canaan. He was talked about being from the mountains and from the valleys, from the plains of, of the, of the Chinnereth. And the Chinnereth is another name for the Sea of Galilee. It's from the east side uh, of the Great Sea, and, and the Great Sea is the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and to the west and all over the, all over the north, from the east, west, north, and, and on covering the whole entire area of the north. These people all came from that, and, uh, and it was an army that was uh, so vast and so many uh, that, they, uh, that, that they couldn't be counted. The Bible just says, even as the sands that is upon the seashore in multitude. So, so they had a big army. They had actual military, a fighting military where they had, uh, they had horses and chariots, and, and the Bible says very many. So they had a lot of them. Now, the Bible doesn't say anything at all about Israel having any horses or having any uh, chariots or anything like that, so I don't suppose they had any of that kind of stuff. Uh, but they, of course, had God, which was far better than all that stuff. Uh, the Bible says then that these five kings came and they set up camp uh, at the waters of Miram and uh, now we know that Israel uh, had set their camp up in Gilgal just on the other side of Jordan. And that was down uh, south of the Sea of Galilee uh, near the Dead Sea. So that was pretty far on down from them. And that was along the Jordan River. Now uh, Miram was uh, farther up north of up the Jordan uh, and uh, a little north of the Sea of Galilee actually or, or the Chimerith Sea. Generous, see, and they gathered here at these, uh, and they gathered these in, in great numbers. The Bible said so they just came there, and they were going to launch this big, big attack on Israel and try to just with this great big group of people they were going to try to knock them out. They knew Israel would be coming to attack them after they heard that they had how that they had defeated the south and the kings of the south and had taken all their lands and killed all them. So it, it was probably their plan. They were going to get there, gather up, get their get their groups to, groups together, and, and divide everything into. Uh, different squadrons and uh, and uh, just get everybody together and, and uh, get the different leaders and stuff and they were probably going to match uh, march rather on Israel and, and they figured with this great number they were just going to go over and overpower them and just uh, just out strengthen them and just go right on over top of them uh, verses 6 through 12 <clears throat> then says this and the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid of them, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver them up all slain before Israel. Thou shalt hawk their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Miram suddenly, and they fell upon them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who smote them and chased them unto, the, unto great Zidon and unto Misrephathmeum, unto the valley of Mizpah eastward, and they saw, uh, smote them until they left none remaining. And Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him. He hocked their horses and burnt their chariots with fire. And Joshua at that time turned back and took Hazor and smote the king thereof with the sword. For Hazor before a uh, time was the head of all these kingdoms, those kingdoms. And they smote all the souls that were therein with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was not one, there was not not any left to breathe, and he burned Hazar with fire. And all the cities of those kings, and all the kings of them did Joshua take. 
and smote them with the edge of the sword, and he utterly destroyed them. So Moses, the ser as Moses the servant of the Lord, had uh, the Lord commanded rather. So uh, God took Joshua, or he told him, he, he, he pulled him aside and he told him there, uh, Joshua once again, he said not to be afraid of them. You know, fear not, don't fear them. He, you know, even though you're outnumbered, even though there's lots of them, they were way, way more than Israel, don't be afraid of them because God said this. He said that tomorrow he would deliver them up uh, to be slain, deliver them up slain. So, you know, today we have wars. We have a lot of different wars. We have military actions and police actions. And, uh, and, and sometimes these will last for years. Sometimes they last for decades, decades. Uh, and uh, later in Israel's history, though, when they were disobedient to God, uh, God would raise up a nation that would come in and, and they would defeat them uh, by their enemies. And they would, they would, what the Bible said, besiege their cities. And that would be Hebrew cities that would be uh, Gentile nations coming up and besieging or sieging, uh, sieging Hebrew nations. And that would last for months or years because, uh, you know, God wouldn't let them just go in and destroy Israel like that so much. Uh, but when God fought for Israel, when Israel was being obedient, when they were doing God's commandments and they were doing what they were supposed to do, when God went in and fought for Israel, those fights didn't last very long at all. They were over uh, in the same day or a day or two later uh, normally. Now God told Joshua to hop and that's uh, H-O-U-G-H, but it's, it's pronounced hock, the horses. And that just means to cut the hamstrings, the tendons on the back of the horse's legs uh, or hind legs so that they, uh, so they wouldn't be able to escape, so the people couldn't jump on their back and ride them out, and they couldn't use them to pull their chariots anymore. Uh, so they were useless. Those, they, they couldn't do anything on, on those horses anymore. Now Joshua didn't wait for the enemy to come up to him. Uh, he went suddenly, the Bible says, so he did a surprise attack. Now, uh, since the enemy thought that they were on the offense, they thought they were going to be the ones that were going to go in ready and they were going to attack uh, Israel, and because God had delivered them into the hand of Israel now, uh, they were easily defeated because Israel had gone on the offense instead of the defense. They thought Israel would be trying to fight against them and that they would overpower them. But now God had delivered them into the hand of uh, Israel and they were easily defeated as everyone that God goes up against is. Now Israel uh, uh, chased them, the Bible says, to great Zidon and to uh, misery of fat, misery of fat, uh, Mame. Uh, which was up, uh, which was up north on, on the coast of the Great Sea, and it is believed uh, to be the hometown of uh, Ahab's wife Jezebel, the wicked Jezebel. Uh, Misery Fath Maim was a, a little south of Zidon on the coast, and uh, so they're both way up north of there. One of them just a little lower down than the other. And Joshua then went back, and he went and destroyed Hazar, and killed the king. And he then burned the city. Now it was probably he probably he did that pro probably because it was the city that led uh, all the others against Israel. It was it was the chief city. It was the one that got them all together, and, and uh, it was the biggest city I think in Canaan at that time. And it was also, uh, like I said, one of the largest cities there. And God uh, uh, then destroyed. When he destroyed it, he burned that. He got rid of all the wickedness. Probably in the larger cities, that's where everybody gathered. Uh, that was probably the area where they all gathered to do most of their uh, uh, idol worshiping and where the most of the, of the wicked and evil things were, were learned from and brought about. And then, uh, of course, Joshua did. Again, he was obedient. He did just as God had told him. He, he hocked the horses and he uh, burned the chariots. Now, they didn't keep the chariots for themselves because that was the wicked stuff of the, of the enemy and God didn't want them having that stuff. Uh, so he killed all the people of the cities uh, that, had, uh, that had fought against Israel and he captured their land just as Moses had told Joshua that God had said that he should do uh, to the inhabitants of the land. Uh, now, uh, we'll read later on that, that uh, it, later on in the Bible that a lot of the people that escaped and a lot of them, uh, uh, they didn't kill all of them like they should have, and they was, it, was, it was bad for Israel. Uh, well, let's go ahead and read uh, verses 13 and 14, and it says this. But as for the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel burned none of them, save Hazor only, that did Joshua burn. And all the spoil of these cities, the cattle and the cattle, the children of Israel took for a prey unto themselves. But every man that smote, but every man they smote with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them, neither left they any 
to breed. So he killed all of them. They killed all of them. Only, the only city, though, that they burned uh, of this group was Hazor. You know, the left they rest stand, uh, left standing, and I think, as I told you there in the last uh, uh, verses, set of verses, that it was probably because it was like an epicenter. It was just a big place where they all went to do their evil, their evil, wicked deeds, and to do idolism and stuff. But they did kill all the people in all the other cities and took the cattle. And cattle, as I've as I've said before, cattle is not always just cows. It can, it is cows, but it can also be sheep and goats. Any kind of a herd type animal can animal can be considered. Uh, a cattle and I'm sure uh, Israel as we read uh, in, in the Old Testament they were much more concerned with sheep and goats but God had said that they would uh, live uh, in, in past in, in, in some of the uh, books and, and chapters beyond God had told Israel that uh, when they went in and they took uh, the, back their inheritance or took their inheritance uh, that they would be able to live in houses they had not built that they would be able to uh, to uh, eat of uh, vineyards and, and of crops and, and, and from the fields of things that they had not planted. And now that was coming to pass, of course. Uh, so uh, verses 15 through 20, verses 15 through 20 says this, As the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took all that land, the hills and all the south country and all the land of Goshen and the valley and the plain and the mountain of Israel and the valley of the same, even from the Mount Halak that goeth up in Seir, even unto Beal Gad in the valley of Lebanon under Mount Hermon and all their kings he took and smote them and slew them. Joshua made war a long time with all these kings but was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon. All others, all other, they took in battle. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they should come, uh, come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, and that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses. They should have followed God's advice in every single thing that God told them. But God had, had, uh, God had, uh, had laid out the plan uh, for taking Canaan, for taking that land of it to be their inheritance, and he had laid that out before Joshua had even become uh, a leader in, uh, in Israel, before he was chosen. Now Moses had then passed on those instructions to Joshua, and Joshua had done, the Bible says, just as exactly as God had told Moses, and Moses had related it then to uh, to Joshua. But verses 16 and 17, they recap the last few chapters of Joshua, reviewing the, uh, the portions of land that Joshua and Israel had taken possession of and had killed the kings and the inhabitants of. He had taken the hills, the Bible said, the south area uh, that became Judah, uh, Benjamin and Dan, and the lower southern area of Goshen, the valleys, the, the the plain, and I assume that the, val the mountain and the valleys of Israel that it talks about was in reference to Jerusalem. Now the Bible uh, may not have just said that they had taken Jerusalem at that time uh, because they only took portion of it, they only took a section of it and the Canaanites had kept the Canaanites had kept part of it, and that was up until the time of King David when he conquered it. Uh, and they also took the north, uh, including the things we read earlier, Mount Hermon, and all, also Mount Hermon sometimes is referred to as Mount Sinai. Uh, but although Joshua and his men had defeated the majority of the cities and the kingdoms, they still didn't take them all. Uh, because it was going to be up to the uh, different tribes when they got in there to drive out the remaining Can Canaanites from their areas. Uh, so there still was some war in there for many years. Now this, this was a problem for Israel because they never did get rid of the idol worship because they never did drive all of the people out of the land. So it became a problem. It again, then it again mentions here in these uh, verses the Gideonite, Gibeonites uh, that were permitted to live. They didn't, they didn't destroy them. They didn't kill them or burn their cities, and that was because of the deal that they had tricked Israel into making. Now, God had caused the Canaanites to hate 
and the fear of the Israelites to want to fight him. They get hard in their hearts so he could do that. And that was so he could rid the land. He wanted to rid the land of them because of their cruelty, uh, their child sacrifice, of their, uh, their immorality. They were just terrible, horrible people and their, and their idol worship. But during the idol worship, they did some horrible things in their temples. And, and Israel not, was, was not supposed to spare any of them. He was not supposed to, but, but, but they did let some of them go. Some of them they were not able to drive out because of their weakness, because of their uh, disbelief, uh, because of their disobedience. Uh, but the Bible says that these things became a stumbling block uh, for Israel. Verses 21 and 23 uh, through 23 says this, And at that time came Joshua and cut off the Am Amicans from the mountains, from Hebron, from Deber, and from Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel, Joshua defeated or destroyed them utterly with their cities. I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the Amicans in just a minute. An Anakims, just a minute. Uh, 22 says, There was none of the An An Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel, only in Gaza and Gath and in Ashdod there remained. So Joshua took the whole land according to all the Lord had said unto Moses and, Moses, and Joshua gave it for inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes, and the land rested from war. Now, God uh, uses these verses, uh, he, he separates them from these others, and the reason is because he wants to talk about the Anakims, and that's it's important. It's important things. Now, the Anakims were a race of giants. Uh, that were in Canaan in several different areas, all up in the north, some in the north, some in the south, some all over. And they were in the mountain regions, and they were just uh, all spread out, I guess, through Canaan. And they were fierce, and they were warlike men, but they were giants. That's what they were, was a race of giants. Now, when the, when the spies, when the 12 spies were sent out from Moses uh, to go and spy out the land, uh, when they came back, they you know ten of them came back with an evil report, and they said that the people are big, or they're just they're giants in the land. That was the Am Am Anakims they were talking about, but they said uh, that the, we just can't fight them; they're too big. We were like grasshoppers in their sight, and, and in our own, that's what we felt like too was grasshoppers. And they said we can't defeat them, and we know this that that generation then. Uh, uh, was not allowed to go in, but this new generation under Joshua, they easily defeated and destroyed them. And the first ones could if they hadn't done that. They usually, they easily de defeated them. They took their land uh, and, and they uh, uh, went in and done it just as God said they would. And, and they left, they, you know, they let God uh, do that. The first generation, well, they for some reason thought it was going to be up to them to go in and fight and kill them. But the second generation then understood. They knew that it was going to be God that would do that. And now they had Joshua leading them. And Joshua was one of the good spies. He was one of the brought, brought good reports saying, yeah, they are big. Yeah, the, fences, the, the cities are fenced. The cities are walled in, great walls. But we can take them. We can beat them. Well, you know, because he knew that with God all things were possible. But the Bible says this about the Anakims here at the end. Uh, it says, there was none left in Israel. But they were still in Philistine. We read about that earlier, which was not, which is, you know, on the on the coast there of, of Israel. But it says they were in Gaza, they were in Gath, and they were in Ashdod, Dod, and those were large, large cities in uh, Philist in Philistine. Now, as you remember, uh, Goliath and his brothers uh, was were Anakims that uh, came from Gath. The last verse in here says that Joshua and Israel through God, and they always, we always remember that it was through God, they took the land, and then Joshua divided the land uh, to the 12 tribes, and it was mostly according to their size. I guess their importance did have something to do with it, but their size uh, was the biggest reason that they uh, uh, were uh, able to get more land. And of course, they were blessed with bigger size because they were blessed with uh, God. And, and the Bible says this, that the land rested from war. Now, we know when we, when we read on up in there, uh, we know that the Bible is absolutely true. We know that the land did rest from war at that point. We also do know this, that uh, because of disobedience, uh, Israel has had a rocky history where they were uh, in a lot of battles, where they were themselves defeated quite a few times and even taken prisoners out of uh, Israel uh, sometimes, and even Judah when it was separated out. Well, thank you for joining us today in uh, Joshua chapter 11. Go ahead, as we always say, and read chapter 12 for you and see what God uh, has in it for you. I think you'll be able to, it'll kind of be a recap of what happened in this chapter. So we might do uh, two chapters next week. 
Uh, but anyway, we'll we'll see what what God has for us. But but read it and see what God gives gives you for it. He always give you a blessing for reading His Word. Thank you again for joining us today. And remember that we are, uh, if you're just joining us on there, we are in Newport, Kentucky, at the corner of 12th and uh, uh, Central. We are New Macedonia Baptist Church. I am Pastor Randall Baker. Again, thank you for joining us. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the wonderful truths that the Bible concerns uh, uh, contains, Lord. We thank you that uh, that you gave us all these examples and examples in there, Lord, and you did that for our learning, so that we could know what would please you and what wouldn't please you. We also know, Lord, that you are, uh, though a God of mercy, you're also uh, a, a God of judgment. We, we thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. We just, thank you, we just thank you for the wonderful blessings you've given us, and thank you for the things that you will give us, Lord. Continue to give us that desire to learn about you, to study your word, and, and, to, and to see what you have in it for us, Lord, and we'll thank you for that as well. We'll ask you, to, we'll ask you just to, uh, uh, to bless us until we uh, see you again, Lord, and we'll thank you for it. Uh, it will, we ask all these blessings in Jesus Christ's name and amen.